allow me to tell you a story about a young lad named Lil Stick. Lil Stick, AKA Young Rick, AKA Young Rick De La Stick. Rick De La Stick has had many highs and many lows, but it was because of each little dip, each little dive, each little valley that allowed him to have his peaks, his pinnacles, his mountain tops. Allow me to explain. As a young lad, Rick De La Stick was constantly bullied by his older brother for everything, every single thing, until he was about 17 years old. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. Young Rick was bullied day after day until he had so much pent up aggression. He didn't know what to do with himself until he discovered the power of iron. It was because young Rick was constantly bullied that the stick got involved in lifting in the first place. Bought all the Arnold magazines, the encyclopedia of bodybuilding. He knew that this was the next step to where he needed to be to fight back Brother Boogs. So we have Rick, the bullied Boogs, turning into the lifting Boogs. A thicker stick, Rick De La Thick. Now, you didn't get too thick, obviously, if you saw the French project, but you, you catch my drift. So that was the valley to the peak. Okay, moving on. Rick De La Thick started lifting at 11 years old. When he was 12, he decided to enter wrestling. Now, Rick De La Thick was an average wrestler as a beginner. Right, he was 50 50 or about so, and Brother Boogs made fun of Rick for every single loss, and it crushed the stick's soul. It broke the stick. So, what the stick decided that he's done losing, he did extra, he stayed after practices, he did extra practices, two practices a day, the camps in the off season, never stopping to progress, all while still pumping the iron. It was because of the dip that the stick was bullied by Brother Boogs and was losing in wrestling. That's what turned him into a, a winning wrestler and so on. And that repeats itself moving on in history. Next big dip. Rick De La Stick not accomplishing his goals. Sophomore and junior season of high school. Wanted to be a state champion, that didn't happen. That he put that little extra effort forth and convincingly became a state champ senior year even while I needed knee surgery from an inflamed infected bursa. That the docs told me in June going into the senior season that they would drain it and it kept coming back and I would need surgery and I said, Doc, you gotta check the math. That's, that's just not acceptable. I will not accept that. I can't miss my senior season. Also, Rick De La Stick was in a picture where there was underage drinking going on. Not even a, 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 a picture that was evidence that Rick himself was drinking. He was just in the picture and the high school whatever principal <clears throat> I had to get suspended from wrestling going into the season and I said nah that's not acceptable so I joined the school play not as a role but as the stage crew because I didn't want to miss any of my senior season I made it happen I made everything possible in my favor to win that state championship because I fell short of it the previous years if I would have accomplished goals whatever it may have been right what whether I was a state champion sophomore year or junior year maybe I wouldn't have been my senior year because I wasn't I wouldn't have been as driven and as hungry so it was that dip that led to that peak same thing going in college will repeat itself Cutting too much weight my first three years, wasn't having any success, and it was because of that dip, feeling terrible, taking too many L's, that I decided to bump up to heavyweight. That allowed Rick the Stick to discover the love, the passion of bulking, of doing heavy lifts, right? Of deadlifts in general. That's what allowed me to, that's what motivated me to buy my home gym in the first place. If it wasn't for those L's, 
and feeling so terrible cutting all that weight, that never would have happened. And then having a very successful offseason going into my senior year of college, being the national champion, becoming a freestyle All-American, uh, being a lot of people that beat me in my junior season, going in and falling short again of my goals my senior season. That's what probably I would say tipped the stick over the edge in terms of the mindset. Sick and tired of not going that extra mile. I would never let that happen again. I would never fall short of my goals because I didn't go the extra mile again. And that's what convinced me in the first place to say, you know what, screw it. I don't care what people say. I'm going to do the same exercise over and over and over again. Um, this is my new life. Just lifting heavy. And that's what led me into the strength and conditioning field. And that's what led me into the personal training and all that stuff. And that's what led me down the road of, this is a dead end. There's not many opportunities in this career. This is leading me nowhere. I'm not making nearly as much, I don't, I'm not even making hardly enough money to even survive. That's what led me into being so miserable and having so much anger and aggression and taking that towards the weights and discovering the power of just aggression and energy and intensity and utilizing that in the gym. And ultimately, just waking up at 4.30 a.m. every single day and not finishing work till 8 p.m. and making hardly over minimum wage is finally what pushed me into trying out for the WWE because I was sick and tired of it. I was only getting older and I realized that I have to, I have to take a chance. I can't just do what, what's, what I find, you know, what I'm comfortable with. Being a strength coach, being a personal trainer, it's not enough. You only live once, you gotta take these chances. Like there's no fear in failing because every single failure in my life is what led to my biggest peaks of successes and pinnacles and the stuff that I'm most proud of. That wouldn't have happened without those failures. So now I'm looking at just the little things. Torn ACL, torn meniscus, torn MCL. I've been out for the past nine months. But if it wasn't for that, would the stick have grown out the mustache? Would he have grown the hair? Would he have focused on upper body for the past nine months to get the juicy pecs, to get the pop and biceps, the capped delts? That never would have happened. I would have continued just being a legs of deadlift specialist, just squatting and doing deadlifts and because that's what I was comfortable with. That's what I found fun and enjoyable. But something pushed me out. Some One of the biggest dips of my life that I couldn't believe this happened, but Looking back, I'm so thankful that I did because it allowed me to just develop everything that wasn't developed. And now I look at the little things. The other day I ran over a nail in my tire. Ran over a nail in my tire and it's, it's making me think like, well, pff, I mean, what good comes out of that? But then you know what good comes out of it? It's a waste of money. Is that a bad thing? Yeah, it sucks and it's annoying. But that only motivates me to do more and to motivates me to be more successful you know, I can't live, I can't support my family the way I want off of the income that I'm making. I need to better myself. I need to, to get to that next level of everything, of strength, of just being an overall character when I'm back in the ring, putting more time in the ring, learning the skills, all because of the little annoying things like, I ran over a nail. I had to get. I had to replace a tire. The air conditioning in the house just went out yesterday. So annoying. The house is 88 degrees and incredibly humid. I couldn't sleep last night. But because I couldn't sleep and I was so freaking hot, I took an ice cold shower at 2 a.m. And you know what? It cooled me off enough to where I could fall asleep. But it also showed me how much they do make you feel better. Cold showers. This morning I woke up. I took a cold shower. I felt great. I felt awake right away. It's hot in the house, so here I am in the pool. Now because I'm in the pool to cool off, I, mean, I, don't even, I don't even know if I want to replace the air conditioning because if I replace the air conditioning, I'll just be chilling inside. Just be comfortable inside, just comfortable. You don't want to be comfortable. Now because I'm out here, I'm comfortable here, but now I'm, I'm going to be getting, I'm not just going to be the tortoise with the hair, I'm going to be the tanned and golden tortoise with the hair because I can soak up the sun while I sit out here and drink my coffee while I cool down. I can move around in the pool and get my muscles loose. Whereas if I was inside, I would just be sitting on the couch, laying on the bed, 
eating snacks, just looking at my phone. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? With every dip, there is a peak. No matter how small the dip or how high the peak, it's what you make it. And I've said this before. I've said this shortly after I was injured. And I'll say it again. I'm going to be cleared soon. But I'm realizing that with difficulties and with struggles, it's not a bad thing. It's always a blessing. That's just the way you got to look at it. And this wasn't about me. I mean, everything, I, the examples I was giving obviously were about me, but that's because that's the only way that I can relate it and push it out to you guys is that the biggest problems are going to lead to the biggest peaks and the biggest success. And even little problems could lead to the biggest peace and success if you look at that at it that way and you don't let it eat you alive. Life, you know, the best, we should all strive to be like this little ducky right here. This little ducky. At times, he just stands still in the water and other times he lets the tide take him away. Moving with the water, the flow, the motion of the ocean. Wherever life pushes you, you go with it. You roll with the punches and you make the most out of it. I'm not trying to be Mr. Positive here, but I think at times we all need to look at each little struggle in that regard because I've been down a lot lately just because of little things. It's great that I'm about to be cleared and my injury and everything, but at the same time, there's always, there's always little things. There's always extra bills out of nowhere to pay, right? There's, there's injuries, there's medical bills to pay. There's auto bills to pay out of nowhere, like little things happen. And to stress about it and to be down about it, only, I mean, let's talk about this from a gym bro stance. It's gonna spike your cortisol, right? It's gonna eat away at your muscle tissue, it's gonna kill your gains. You can look at it that way. Or you can be, hey, you can be pissed off about it, right? But you could use that aggression to the iron, you can make the best gains of your life, you can hit the biggest PRs, and you could say, you know what, this sucks that this happened, but because this happened, I'm gonna make freaking sure that I do everything I can. It's taking me this way. This is negative aggression. This is me pissed off. I'm gonna do everything I can to spin it around to get to the other end of the spectrum. Because you gotta own your life, right? Owning your life, mindset, attitude, that's really what it's about. I mean, we're just getting cheesy and generic right now, but that's, that's what it's about. That's all I'm gonna say.